If you're battling it out, what's the limit? You know, how far do you go? If you have a chance of making it in, then you're going to do whatever it takes. You got to attack. And if you can make an, an aggressive move and make it happen, you go for it. Justin Allgaier wins at Chicago Land. This is awesome. You've got to uh, be on the offense to not put yourself in a, in a spot that where you have to be desperate. What a night for William Byron. I say bring him on. I don't care who's in the race. I think we, uh, we're going to have a, a shot at it. It's all about winning a championship. It's win a championship. The rest really doesn't matter. Reed looking for the checkers. He's going to get it. Second career victory at Daytona. Oh, my God. We're going to celebrate. He finds an oasis in the desert. What a night for William Byron. William Byron wins at Indy. Back in row five, there's William Byron. He'd love to make it four wins in 2017 and lock his way to Miami. Well, Jeff, and I'll take that conversation with Elliot Sadler one farther. Not just the Joe Gibbs Toyotas, but his own teammates. In the pre-race show, I had this conversation with Kyle Petty. Everyone feels there's going to be two, if not three, junior motorsports cars in Miami. And I said it then that I thought William Byron had the advantage because I thought he was the one that had the firepower to win. Elliott Sadler on a 36-race winless streak, while his last win in 2016 did come in a mile and a half in Kentucky. I think it's important for Elliott Sadler to get a win before Miami to kind of reconvince this team that they can win when they get to Miami. I do want to listen in to a little bit of radio from the nine of William Byron. Hey, William, that 20, what has been doing all night, uh, it goes into turn one, push air on the bumper of the guy in front to make him lose, you know, but you're pulling him at a corner exit, but that's what he's been doing all night with the car in front of him. And that's Mac, Max Pappas giving information to William Byron. Max Pappas is William's driver advisor. That's an example of how William Byron is using every tool in the toolbox to be as good as he can possibly be. Squirrely as they come into turn number one, William Byron got loose. The 20 of Eric Jones takes the lead and Kyle Larson goes by on the outside. Brennan Poole also taking advantage of that. Is that a product of just taking two tires? That looked really odd to me. These restarts are extremely aggressive, but he lost all his speed on the straightaway. It wasn't in the corner. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, I know you're going to get a look at a replay, but as you look at it, wow, this is tight up front still. Brennan Poole was told he has a deal with the nine. The nine was going to wave to get them going, and it looks like Brennan Poole got going a lot better. Yeah, just a nice job by Brendan Poole. I wonder if there's any damage. We just saw those cars run through the grass. I don't see any splitter damage. Matt Tift in the 19 was one of them that went through the grass. And you're right, guys. That was Matt Tift who went through the grass. And just a couple restarts ago, Justin Algar came across the radio saying that he felt like guys were going to do this. You see, he gets very lucky there not to tear apart the front end of that race car, Matt Tift in the 19. But he said he felt guys were going to do this because he was losing the, where he was looking when you were so close behind other cars on the restart, guys. Yeah, that William Byron, he just he missed a shift or something. And when he did, he got hit from behind by Brendan Poole I, right here. But the nine lost momentum. He was going forward and it started going back. And Brendan Poole just got into the back of him. I don't know if he missed a shift or something right here. See right there? Something happened to the nine. Bouncing back between the cars, losing spots, and now William Byron settles in at seventh, just in front of Daniel Hemrick. And for, think about that. Split second. One small mistake. One thing happens, and now you go from leading the race to back here in the Hornets' nest in seventh. Well, and Rick, you brought up right side tires. To your point, Jeff, I don't know if he missed a shift or perhaps just spun the tires. And you know how important it is, that left rear tire, which is much older on William Byron's car than any of these other cars, would be the one that would do most of the driving in the restart zone. So perhaps he just spun the tires. We're going to have to wait and see what the results are. But 
that could be something we'll have to watch as we get later in this race and we see more cars perhaps only take right side tires. Fresh Goodyear tires for William Byron. He said on that restart, he, quote, rushed the shift a little bit. So he said, my fault, guys. He said the car was just a little bit too free for Goodyear tires. We'll see where this cycles everybody out once we go back green to wrap up stage two, Rick. For everyone else in front of them, they came to pit road on 83 and didn't come to pit road under this most recent. It's Elliot Sadler who has been moving of the playoff drivers, moving toward the front. He was able to get by William Byron and now setting his sights on Cole Custer. So Sadler has moved up to seventh, Dave. He made a nice little adjustment on that race car for him. Remember in that last stage, he finished fourth and gained seven valuable stage points. The car was free for him, but he said, I don't want you to tighten me up too much. And after getting around uh, one car there, he thought he was going to get two for one. But after making that pass, Elliott seems very happy with his race car right now. Marty? Davis teammate William Byron is going the other direction from second to ninth in a four eighth, actually, in a free fall for William Byron. Right now. Here's what he had to say on the radio. And what he has said is I just have zero speed in the center of the corner. The car just is not working. The front end not working. And now William Byron will turn left and get onto pit road for his fuel. Again, 12 laps to go in this race. Is everyone having to come to pit road for fuel? Michael Lynette stays out. Ty Dillon still out. Marty. And with the points cushion they have, Dave Ellen's kind of making the conservative call here, Rick. He's going to go with two right side Goodyear tires for William Byron. Also a chassis adjustment. Still struggling with that car being tight. You see a big chassis adjustment in the fuel to make it to the end. You kind of scratching your head during the race as to what was going on with the car. Did you guys ever figure anything out? <laughs> no, we we couldn't get it to to go after 15 or 20 laps. But I think um, you know we had something to start. I felt like felt really good about it going into the race, and the first run was good. Then we had a couple cycles on our tires, and it just kind of just kind of went away and stayed that way the rest of the race. So uh, we'll figure it out. But you know we're going to some good racetracks coming up, so uh, that's good for us. And hopefully we can just rebound and run really strong at Phoenix. I was going to say, take me back to your days in the trucks, in the K&N, and whatever you want to at Phoenix. How confident are you going into that race? Yeah, really confident. You know, we'd, we'd like to have a little buffer, but, you know, it is what it is. It's part of this deal. So, um, you know, I know our Liberty University Chevy is going to be good there, and uh, we're good there in the spring. So hopefully we can just rebound uh, from this run and kind of go there and hopefully lead some laps and win the race. Disappointing tonight. He'll be back next week. Right, Dave, we have a developing story regarding the Junior Motorsports pit crews. They use the pit crews from Hendrick Motorsports, the cup teams, like the 7 uses the 48 pit crew. Well, their plane made a stop in Arkansas, is not going to be continuing on here to Phoenix, so JRM is not going to have the use of their Cup Series pit crews here today, and therefore they're going to have to assemble some pit crews from a, a mix of development guys that are out here, some other guys that are already here on the road crews, a bit of a hodgepodge of pit crews for the entirety of the Junior Motorsports cars and that's incredible pressure on these teams right now knowing what's at stake here as we go into the race here later today guys what i've just been told is that the hendrick pit crew that normally pits the 14 of jj yaley for tristar motorsports they're not going to have kind of a hodgepodge group well their pit stall for the race is just a few down from the nine of william byron and as of now a scenario could play out where it would be one pit crew crewing both of these cars during the race so obviously on the first lap in um, assuming that the nine is still on the lead lap, they would come pit William Byron and then shift down, and the 14 will have to come in on the second lap um, under a caution or a stage in. So it sounds like these pit crews could be pulling double duty. Now they're still also actively trying to find more pit crew guys throughout the garage to kind of chip in, so that could change. But as of now, these pit crews could be doing double duty. Time for the drivers to climb inside their cars. The three drivers that came in as the favorites from Junior Motorsports, the most points earned up to this point. Well, 
they've got an issue. Their crew not going to be whole as they get ready to start this race in Phoenix. To be one of the final four at Homestead would be the biggest race of your lifetime, biggest race of your career. That would mean the world to us get there. I prove that we belong in the conversation of championship caliber drivers. To culminate all the hard work and put it into one race is, is something that is unlike any feeling. Well, I really want to race at Homestead when it all counts. To be a Final Four at Homestead, I would love to have that feeling again. It's going to be stressful. It's going to be uh, demanding. All bets are off, and you, you have to go for broke. It doesn't matter who, who rises up and, and takes care of the moment. It doesn't matter what we do next week. Today's the day. Stressful, demanding, who will rise up? The intensity now at an all-time high for the eight drivers for the championship four positions. Justin Algar comes in this race, 20 points to the good, but he does not have his normal pit crew. So let's tell you who he has. He has the 48th rear tire carrier, Ryan Patton. That's the only guy who's normally on the seven. He has the Jackman from the 24 car of Chase Elliott. He has the backup front tire carrier from the 24 car of Chase Elliott. And the rest of the guys on his pit crew are developmental guys. This will be a massive test for the 17, the depth of junior motorsports. Dave? In a very up and down playoffs for William Byron so far. Just two top five finishes, but he may have saved his best for last. He told me a moment ago, not only do we have the best car of the playoffs for us, it's maybe the best car we've had in months. William Byron wants to make it to Miami with a win here at Phoenix. Let's see who makes that championship four and get the engines cranked here in the desert. And now for the most famous word today because of these guys right here. This is a seven crew member getting a little practice in a little warm up. Remember, it's kind of a makeshift crew on all three of the junior motorsports entries trying to advance in the playoffs. So it's gonna be stressful on pit road today and not many stops. So a mistake would be very costly. But an opportunity, right? You can step up. You can earn yourself a full-time job taking advantage of this opportunity that's been presented to you. Hey, Rick, we're gonna follow these junior motorsports crews all day long, but I think it's important to note what Jeff brought up earlier. This is the shot for these guys. They are Hendrick Motorsports development crew guys, and these guys for Elliott Sadler pitted Matt Crafton in the Truck Series race last night. He was battling for a championship. They told me we have all between one and three years of experience. So these aren't guys that just started a few months ago. These are guys are have been waiting for the shot for three years to get a shot like this in an Xfinity Series race. So they definitely want to prove a point here this afternoon, but very experienced guys coming off the bench, Rick. And we'll have to rise to the occasion because so much is on the line as the field approaches the Geico restart zone. Yeah, but Jeff, you mentioned the Junior Motorsports pit crew and they need to perform to move up, but I think I would disagree. If I'm one of the crew chiefs, that's not what I'm selling to these new pit crew guys. I think I'm selling no mistakes. I don't need you to give me any spots. Just don't leave a wheel loose. Just don't lose laps. When I look at the points currently, there's still 20 above or better. So while I know the competitor in you says gain me spots because our cars aren't good in the long run, the conservative guy in me that's points racing is saying, hey, what, guys? Just give me some five lug nuts on every wheel, make sure it's full of fuel, and let the drivers decide how hard we're going to run on the racetrack. And again, these aren't the normal pit crews, the full normal pit crews for these teams for Junior Motorsports. Their charter that was on its way from Charlotte here to Phoenix, it had a mechanical issue, there was an electrical issue, they had to land the plane. That crew was not able to get here in time for the start of this race, so this is developmental team members that are making up these crews. So a makeshift pit crew for all three of the top drivers, William Byron, Justin Allgaier, and Elliott Sadler. And here they come to pit road. Parker. Yeah, it's Justin Allgaier in fifth place. Has been complaining about that car getting too tight. He's losing the feel in the front end and actually feels like the left front is giving up the most. He at one point had to start shifting towards the end of that run to try to keep up speed. They should do four Goodyear tires and adjustments on that seven car here and Sunoco fuel. And we'll see how this pit crew performs, Marty. Parker William Byer in the middle of your screen is the only junior motorsports driver who has a normal tire changer, his front tire changer, the same one he's had all year long. Everybody else fill in, but one to three years experience. So this should be a fairly clean stop for William Byron, who says his car is too tight. Elliot Sadler's guy, you saw the guy slip coming around the front of the race car for him. He said his car, you heard the radio, way too tight. Ryan Blaney holds serve here on pit road. The JRM guys, not too bad, Rick. They do lose a few spots, but not bad. Not bad, but how about Daniel Hemrick and the 21 team? What a strong performance by that crew. Got him two spots. Ryan Bl Well, we wondered how it was going to go for Junior Motorsports on the first round of pit stops. And, you know, 
I'll, I'll give it a C. You see right here, a little trouble on Elliott Sadler. They, a pit crew member falls. He lost two spots. You see right here the disappointment. And you heard Marty Snyder report that he thought it was pretty decent because the seven only lost a couple spots. But unbeknownst to Marty, the nine had so much trouble here on the left side that couldn't get the jack out of the car. And he came in in the sixth position. But Marty had no idea. He wasn't even on the graphic, but he came out in the 15th position, Marty. So nine spots lost for William Byron. After further review, Steve, yes, they did lose nine spots. And you mentioned they could not get the jack underneath the left side of the car. So something they're working on fixing right now. Dave Ellens has met with uh, Hendrick Motorsports officials trying to make sure that they get that corrected for this next stop. Hey, Rick, following the progress of William Byron after losing nine spots on pit road, restarted 13th and moved his way now up to 7th. You see on the left-hand side of your screen, that's a meeting between Ryan Pemberton, who runs things for Junior Motorsports, and on the far left of your screen, that's Chris Berkey. He's in charge of all the pit crews at Hendrick Motorsports. And the bottom line is, I talked to Chris a moment ago, he said the nine is just too low on the left side. A veteran pit crew, normally William Byron would have Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s pit crew here on pit road. They might know to pick that left side up, Steve, immediately. But Dylan Insman, who's the gas man today, just didn't dawn on him to help pick up the left side of the car. So what they're going to do is they're going to have Dylan, when he comes around next time, pick up that left side so the jack can get under the car easier and hopefully not lose spots on pit road next time. See, that's the talk that we've talked about. Filling in these guys, filling in today versus those veteran guys makes a big difference. Those are the nuances that are hard to cover in practice. Sometimes you just have to get experience in race conditions. And... And every pit road's a little different. They can be a little angled to the pit box, and there's just something they're going to have to work on throughout the day. Steve, a lot of times we see a little cutout in the side skirt where the jack would slide in there, but on the nine you don't see that. It looks as though the side skirt goes all the way down, and you don't see that little cutout. Well, you don't on the right. I'm assuming you will have that cutout even on the left, but the frame rails are so low and the ride heights are so low in this car that either perhaps, to your point, they didn't cut enough skirt out and raise the jack post enough. Maybe the car's too low, but you normally need inch and three quarter or two inches below that jack post to get a jack in but to your point rick the left side i don't know if it's just all white it makes it look worse but it yeah. looks pretty solid on yeah. there so difficult and and again these pit crews they practice every single day it's choreographed every step they know where their teammate is going to step these are all new guys it all came up just a couple hours ago that they wouldn't have their normal crews out here and so it's been a difficult time for a few of the teams the nine of William Byron. It's official. William Byron has clinched a spot in the championship four. He has enough points at the end of stage two that he has locked himself into the championship four. Now there are three spots still to be determined. Taking up two and with a fairly comfortable lead over the cut line are the seven of Justin Allgaier and the one of Elliott Sadler. The big fight right now is between the double zero and the 21. They're separated by just two points. Byron already has been tabbed as one of the Hendrick Motorsports drivers for 2018. He will be behind the wheel of one of their cup cars. And so close to a championship a year ago in the Camping World Truck Series. He has progressed through the ladder system. William Byron had an engine expire before the last race of the year. And that took him out of the possibility of winning the championship in the Camping World Truck Series. Now he's fighting for an Xfinity Series championship. And you just heard that. For William Byron, this was a huge break because they were going to be three laps short on fuel. So all smiles right now in the nine pit. Take a listen on the radio. Right, we're locked into Homestead. Our left side changing was not going so well. So we got to the lead with right side. Go for it, man. And that worked. The sub pit crew, Parker, gained two spots here on pit road, coming through when they needed to. As they come out of turn number four, there'll be 13 laps to go. Green flag back in the air. Eric Jones all over the back bumper of that 21. Three wide through the dog leg. William Byron out front. Emmer's going to be three wide in the middle. 22 clears him. Blaney clears him on the outside. Jones on the inside. They're side by side for second. Jones slides up the racetrack. He has to get out of the gas. Blaney takes second. William Byron coming out of turn number four. Byron is going to win at Phoenix. The 20. But William Byron. Burn him down, my man. Pitcrow gives him. 
two fresh right side tires. He takes advantage of it. That track position stays up front and wins the race. Fourth win this season. And William Byron, a championship opportunity taken away from him a year ago. It's right in front of him now. The Xfinity Series Championship for Elliot Sadler, Justin Allgaier, William Byron, and Daniel Hemrick. His first three names, all from Junior Motorsports. Well represented in the Championship Four. What an exciting battle we saw out of Daniel Hemrick and Cole Custer today. Two young drivers race each other with respect. And that's classy right there. You saw him go over and talk to Cole Custer. Cole Custer has nothing to be ashamed of. He should certainly be disappointed, but a really good first year. Remember, this is a brand new team. This team was just formed this year. He needs to hold his head high. William Byron, the 19 year old from Charlotte, North Carolina. He will race next season in the Monster Energy Cup Series. But before he does that, he wants to win a championship in the Xfinity Series, and he has an opportunity. Right. William Byron climbs from the car. The crowd's going wild down here. Two tires, an incredible stop with that developmental team, and you guys grabbed that win. How'd you do it? I don't know. We uh, grinded all day. Um, great job by this team. Uh, to make that pick call by Dave is awesome, man. We're ready to go to Homestead. Uh, this one got robbed from me last year at Phoenix, so got it back and just can't thank these guys enough for that. Um, awesome job. With that truck race last year you are talking about, when it comes down, they're about to wave that green flag. Is that stuff going through your mind when you're thinking, man, this can't happen twice to me? Yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, you're kind of focused on your day, and best defense is offense, so you got to be aggressive, and that's what we were today. So uh, we just got to do that one more week, and uh, we'll end up pretty good. What do you want to say to these great fans out here? They're awesome. Thank you, everybody. Uh, great to get a win here at Phoenix. Uh, it's one of my favorite racetracks, so thank you, guys. Congratulations, buddy. We'll see you in victory lane. Kelly? Daniel. We heard it there for Cole Custer on the opposite end of the spectrum, the nine of William Byron in victory lane. Marty. And William Byron is in the car talking to Rick Hendrick. He was handed the phone immediately from Ryan Pemberton. And talk about the day this team has been through. The supplemental pit crew, the, the substitute pit crew, we should say, lost nine spots on that first stop of the day. And they gained two on the final stop of the day. This young man has been incredible. 19 years old. He's won at Daytona. He's won at Indianapolis. And now he's in the championship four. Trying to wrap up the phone call with the balls. Just lay the phone on the dash, William. And celebrate your fact you're in at Miami. And in with authority. High fives for these guys. A hug from Dave Allen to his crew chief. Hey, William, you told me this afternoon this is the best car we've had in months, but this one was hard, wasn't it? Yeah, this one was <laughs> pretty, pretty freaking tough uh, to get that victory. That was uh, a lot of adversity today from just every little thing was, was kind of going different ways, a little bit short on fuel at times, but uh, this pit crew did awesome. They, they didn't even know they were pitting the car this morning, so uh, incredible job to them. This is the momentum we need. This is, uh, can't wait to get to Homestead. Only one rookie has ever won the Xfinity Series championship, Rick. It was Chase Elliott in the nine car. William Byron trying to do it in 2017. William Byron will join Chase Elliott at Hendrick Motorsports in 2018. But first, he has business in front of him. After winning here at Phoenix, he has clinched his spot in the championship four and a possibility to win the Xfinity Series title. But he's Chase Elliott has to win. Uh, you know, having times that Chase Elliott comes so close to winning, and it hasn't happened. If it were to happen on Sunday, you're talking about a career-defining career win, that would be it. So just so much on the line, uh, pit stops, track position, restarts, any small mistake could keep you from having a chance to win a championship. It's interesting you use the word career-defining win, and it would be his first. <laughs> that, but your first win define your career. Yeah, but it, it, this early in his career, he's given himself that opportunity 
he has put himself on that stage. He has made it to the round of eight. He has given himself a chance to go race for a championship in Miami, but it has to head through Phoenix first, and it will take a win. Why mathematically, perhaps not, it would take a major, major shakeup for him to get in on points. So him and Jimmy Johnson looking for wins tomorrow. A busy day tomorrow. It all starts at 1.30 Eastern with NASCAR America. Then countdown to green at 2 and 2.30. It's the Monster Energy Series racing from Phoenix. That's all on NBC. You won't want to miss it. It will determine the championship four. Saturday, the NASCAR Xfinity Series races for a title at Homestead Miami Speedway. We had the chance to sit down with each of those four drivers about what it's going to take to bring home that trophy. Justin Allgaier back to victory lane, a winner at Phoenix. When we set out the season, you know, the goals are to make the Final Four at Homestead. Darren's put a lot into this year, and to have three of us in the Final Four is really cool. We've put all our eggs in this basket for this weekend, knowing that a win is going to give you a best shot of winning that championship. I had two cars in mind that I felt like were going to be the two guys we were going to have to watch out for the most, and that was the 21 and the 00. I know Daniel is getting the best of everything RCR has. We weren't supposed to be here. Heck, you probably asked us six, eight races ago. We would have told you the same thing. They have all their resources spread between three different race teams trying to prepare for this moment. We have 530 plus employees back at RCR. We've had all those hands on one race car for this moment, and that's what we're really excited about. Everyone's had their strengths and weaknesses at times. Justin won a lot of races this year. His second win of the season. And Elliott won the points. I would say we're all kind of mixed in there somewhere. We're going to see how that plays out. William Byron in victory lane. Elliott and I were teammates last year. We had a great Final Four round here at Homestead. We raced each other really well, had a lot of fun. And I've never had to overcome more stuff throughout a season of any form of racing is what I have this year. To do that, to come through it and know that we're standing here with a shot, that's something to, to take pride in, and we'll take whatever this weekend gives us. It stinks to lose a championship. Hopefully we can go out there and do it. I know that we've got four of the cleanest drivers in the field that are going for a championship. Everybody's got a shot to race for the same thing. Best men take all here at Homestead. That's what it's all about.